but I do find it really unfair to put this rhetoric conversation on both sides. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and other Democrats have called Donald Trump a threat to democracy. That's because the man tried to overturn a free and fair election. And Donald Trump uses that. And then he goes all out and fundraises on exactly the same thing. He's the only person who's called Democrats human scum. After the second assassination attempt on Donald Trump, MAGA Republican politicians and Fox News hosts have been teaming up to, one, blame the attempt on Democrats and the rhetoric, and number two, whitewash Trump. Trump's own incendiary rhetoric. Unfortunately for one Fox News host in particular, she was shut down by an unlikely alliance between liberal commentator Jessica Tarlov and a high-profile conservative journalist, and it was glorious. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video. I'm going to start with this one here. This is the tail end of an exchange between Fox News host Martha McCallum and a former Trump administration official whose name escapes me, but he actually, I remember the face because he appeared on Megyn Kelly's show with David Pakman and was humiliated by David Pakman. Well, he has an exchange in which he tries to whitewash Donald Trump and it sets uh, Martha McCallum up for failure later on. I mean, how many times we've had discussions in the past several years, Donald Trump focuses so much on making people's lives better. He doesn't want to get off the campaign trail because he understands this is so vitally important for the future of the country. But real quickly, you did mention the rhetoric. You said Kamala Harris lied about the bloodbath thing. She lied about Charlottesville. All the things have been debunked. But she even called Joe Biden a racist and a rapist on a debate stage. And you know it's all not real because... Joe Biden put on a MAGA hat the other day. If he really believed the things he was spewing, do you think he would do that? And so a couple of things. There's no inherent contradiction there. The MAGA hat itself is not a threat to democracy. Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. It was a gesture of goodwill when a Trump supporter asked Donald or asked President Biden to put on the MAGA hat. But again, Note what's going on here, just a total whitewashing of Donald Trump's personal history and his personal rhetoric and instead pointing the finger at Democratic rhetoric, which of course can get incendiary. I would argue nowhere near as often as the Republicans. And what's interesting is a conservative writer effectively makes that point as well. So as soon as Martha McCallum ends that exchange with the ex-Trump supporter, she turns to the editor at large of the Wall Street Journal, one of the most reputable conservative publications in the country, and he shut down that talking point pretty quick. So former President Trump says that rhetoric from President Biden and Vice President Harris has put him in danger, telling Fox News Digital their comments are, quote, causing me to be shot at. The president and vice president condemned political violence after both assassination attempts on the former president. Joining me now in New York, Jerry Baker, Wall Street Journal editor at large and a Fox News contributor and Jessica Tarlov, co-host of The Five. Great to have both of you with us, Jerry. You know, on this issue of um, of the dangerous back and forth here and the fear that is put into people as they listen to this and what it might drive someone who's not stable to do. Yeah, I don't have a lot of time for this idea that political rhetoric is causing people to go out and commit acts of violence like this. We've always had, you know, very tough political rhetoric. We, you know, the, 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 our, our very terminology in campaign, campaign itself is a, is, a, is, a, is a military term. And we talk about battlegrounds and we talk about targets and things like that. And people use very harsh rhetoric. And let's not make any mistake, Donald Trump himself, he used some extremely harsh rhetoric about his opponents, about the press, about immigrants and all that kind of stuff. So, so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm really leery of this idea that somehow there's a a direct link between something that Joe Biden or Kamala Harris may have said and some crazy person who goes out and shoots Donald Trump. The bigger problem. So there you go. That is, again, the conservative editor of the Wall Street Journal, a conservative publication, really shutting that down and also pointing out that however you might want to whitewash Donald Trump's history of incendiary rhetoric, Donald Trump is more than guilty of the same sort of rhetoric which could easily lead to violence. As a matter of fact, as we speak, this is an ongoing concurrent scandal. But in Springfield, Ohio, multiple schools have had to shut down, had to close down because of persistent bomb threats that have been reported as a consequence, or rather I should say in the aftermath and as a likely consequence, of Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and other prominent Republicans signal boosting the lie, the conspiracy theory, that Haitian migrants are eating people's cats and dogs. As a matter of fact, J.D. Vance publicly admitted that though these stories have not been corroborated, and as a matter of fact, they have been refuted or contradicted by law enforcement and investigation, local political authorities as well, that sometimes, you know, Republicans have to, quote, create stories and, quote, to draw the media's attention to certain things. So 
again, if the standard that you want to establish is that, um, you know, incendiary rhetoric can contribute to violence, I think that's a perfectly reasonable standard, by the way, to add, then you need to hold Republicans to that as well. Right now, there is no evidence that uh, this particular person was radicalized by things said by President Biden, Vice President Harris, uh, liberal or progressive commentators. That may very well be the case, but that has not been established yet, number one. And number two, Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. So it's entirely possible that simply saying true things uh, will inspire the worst in mentally deranged people. That's entirely possible. But then we have to have a broader conversation of uh, should we suppress stating true things because as a consequence, uh, it can radicalize people? That's an ongoing philosophical debate. But of course, what MAGA Republicans and Fox hosts are trying to do is suppress uh, and punish Democrats for correctly calling Donald Trump an authoritar authoritarian threat to democracy. Also, unfortunately for Martha McCallum, she made the mistake of having on Jessica Tarlov, liberal Fox News commentator, who also contributed to the uh, pretty brutal shutdown that this talking point received. And I just wanted to add to Jerry's comments about the shooting I'm, or the attempted assassination. I'm so glad that he's all right. I don't understand how there isn't, you know, a bipartisan bill on the table right now. You know, save Donald Trump or whatever you want to call it. Everyone would sign on to it. The Secret Service has a lot of explaining to do. And we've heard that that report from the first assassination attempt is a complete bombshell. I think it was Senator Blumenthal who said yeah. that. But I do find it really unfair to put this rhetoric conversation on both sides. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and other Democrats have called Donald Trump a threat to democracy. That's because the man tried to overturn a free and fair election. And Donald Trump uses that and then he goes all out and fundraises on exactly the same thing. He's the only person who's called Democrats human scum. He's well, the only I, I person. It's fair to say that we've seen, you know, difficult rhetoric on both sides. But I, I take Jerry's point. So, again, Martha McCallum is trying to, well, listen, both sides, both sides. But again, the level of the rhetoric, the incendiary nature of the rhetoric, we have not heard President Biden refer to Democrats or excuse me, refer to Republicans, MAGA Republicans or even Donald Trump as human scum. Uh, you don't hear or see AOC uh, calling the Republican Party a party of groomers and pedophiles and evil party the way that Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican congresswoman, has referred to the Democratic Party. So again, I'm happy to do a forensic audit of elected Democrats versus elected Republicans because we all know the truth that for every one incendiary comment made by an elected Democrat, you can find five to 10 to 20 from an elected Republican. And Martha McCallum, um, had to slide in there well both sides, but then quickly pivot away because she knows that she is woefully outmatched on this topic. So great performance by uh, Jessica Darlov in particular, obviously the editor of the Wall Street Journal and pretty poor showing by Martha McCallum and other lazy, dishonest Fox hosts who try to create a false equivalence where there is none and to blame Democrats for incendiary rhetoric, but not holding Republicans to the same standard. So I imagine we're going to see more of this uh, in the near future. And hopefully Jessica Tarlov will be on the five uh, to shut down their talking points when they come. In the meantime, you let me know what you think in the comments.